Hey everybody, Adobe started rolling out the beta test of its Adobe Podcast Studio to some of its users today. I'll give you a quick first look at it and do a quick test to see how it compares to the competition. One of the biggest things to know is that Adobe Podcast Studio is audio only. So we'll see if that hurts them as more shows move towards video and video first approaches. Here we are in the new Adobe Podcast Studio beta. First thing that we see is once you log in, we've got a button to create a new project. We can pick up where we left off. Adobe has a, an introduction podcast in here that basically tells you what to expect. We've got an upload button so we can upload audio to this. We can choose different music or upload music. And then we've got a placeholder area right here where it says you can write anything inside. In the audio, they tell us you can also add in a placeholder where you can leave a note about what to record or what music to add later. So these are just text notes for you to help with post-production. They give an example of how you can use the music as an outro and then the filters they only have the enhanced speech and you can toggle that on or off so let's go back to the home page if you've been in here before the audio templates look familiar enhanced speech we already know what that is if you don't know what that is it allows you to upload audio or video to supposedly enhance it. You have a strength slider. If you don't have access to the premium version of Adobe Podcast, you will not have this strength slider. And I believe there are some limitations to the length of audio you can upload. The other thing we have in here is we've got graphic templates, but we have a mic check. Let's take a look at this real quick because it seems to be a pretty handy feature. Check your mic for free, get advice on how to improve your microphone setup. We'll make sure you sound podcast ready. So we land on this screen. How's my microphone setup and placement? So we'll hit the test button. It turns red. Now we'll talk for a minute to see, to allow it to measure our audio and decide what, what needs to be improved. So we stop it, let it think for a minute. And then we have these targets. For mine, it's telling me that I'm in the sweet spot, but I'm kind of at the edge of it. My gain isn't where it should be. I don't have the green check mark. For background noise and echo, I've got the green check mark. To me, and this is why I don't like working with Adobe, everything seems backwards to me. We can tell by looking at my background noise and echo since I'm in an acoustically treated space. It's quiet. That puts me down here with less noise. From that perspective, it kind of makes sense. But when I'm looking at something where I don't know where I am, like with gain, when I see that I'm not inside the circle and I'm on the more gain side, to me, that would indicate that I need to add more gain. What that's saying is I'm coming in too loud and should turn my gain down some. So keep that in mind when you're using the mic check. The, if you're over here, it's telling you your mic's too loud or you're too far from the mic or you have too much noise or you have too much echo. If you're on this side, you're too close, you have, you're too quiet, you have little background noise, or you have little echo. Again, it's a pet peeve of mine. We aren't talking about echo here. We are talking about reverb. I don't know why so many places use the term echo, because that makes it so much more challenging for people like me to know what you're talking about. Because sometimes when you record, you actually get an echo. But when someone says, I'm getting echo on my recording and they don't provide a sample. I don't know if it's actually an echo they're dealing with or if it's reverb, so I can't help. 
I'll end my rant there. But let's go back to the home page. I've already set up a session, or I guess that's what they call them. So here we are on the recording page. If I wanted to record by myself, I could do that right here, right now. If I wanted to invite a guest, we'd click this button, and then add the guest's email, send it off to them. The biggest thing here is your guests have to have an Adobe account. You have to log in, and to me, when you're competing with Riverside and StreamYard, all of these different services, you're already putting yourself at a disadvantage by requiring people to have an Adobe login. We want to be able to send links out to guests, they click on it, and they're just taken there and they're ready to record. No logging in. No setting up user profiles. But I already have a free account, so I went ahead and invited myself. So let's see how this goes. And I'm going to use just a laptop for the other side of this conversation to kind of give an example of what this can do in a typical remote recording situation where you have somebody using a laptop and someone using a nice sounding mic. I'll start recording by pressing the record button. It shows me uh, as Tara Kelly. I'm obviously not Tara Kelly, but for right now, since I'm using my login on my laptop, I have to play Tara Kelly. So I will now mute myself and use my laptop. And here I am talking as Jesse McEwen. I am using my laptop. It's probably 18 inches away from me. I did not use the mic setup. So I'm just recording this as is in my studio. It's on my desk. Nothing real fancy. Let's see how this sounds. And now I will stop the recording and see what it looks like. So when we're done recording, we get the audio wave. It takes a few minutes for it to transcribe. So let's play this back. I'll start recording by pressing the record button. It shows me uh, as Tara Kelly. I'm obviously not Tara Kelly, but for right now, since I'm using my login on my laptop, I have to play Tara Kelly. So I will now mute myself and use my laptop. And here I am talking as Jesse McEwen. I am using my laptop. It's probably 18 inches away from me. I did not use the mic setup. So I'm just recording this as is in my studio. It's on my desk. Nothing real fancy. Let's see how this sounds. So it seems to have cut off the end of the recording. Let's turn on enhanced speech and hear what that sounds like. I'll start recording by pressing the record button. It shows me uh, as Tara Kelly. I'm obviously not Tara Kelly, but for right now, since I'm using my login on my laptop, I have to play Tara Kelly. So I will now mute myself and use my laptop. And here I am talking as Jesse McEwen. I am using my laptop. It's probably 18 inches away from me. I did not use the mic setup. So I'm just recording this as is in my studio. It's on my desk. Nothing real fancy. Let's see how this sounds. Okay, so I'll tighten this up a little bit. Tighten up the transitions. Use my laptop, and here I am talking as Jesse McEwen. I am using my laptop. It's, it's on my desk. Nothing real fancy. Let's see how this sounds. And now I will stop the recording. Okay, so first thoughts, enhanced speech as usual. To me, it changes my voice too much, especially on the Tara Kelly track when I'm using my nice mic and preamps. I'll toggle it on and off. To me, what I'm hearing is it makes me sound more robotic than I already do. And I know 
I sound robotic. I'm very monotone. I don't have a lot of prosody to my voice. It's just the way I am. But that's what I'm hearing is it takes my already robotic voice and makes it sound even more robotic when I have enhanced speech on. I'll start recording by pressing the record button. It shows me uh, as Tara Kelly. I'm obviously not Tara Kelly, but for right now, since I'm using my login on my laptop, I have to play Tara Kelly. So I will now mute myself and use my laptop. And here I am talking as Jesse McEwen. I am using my laptop. It's probably 18 inches away from me. I did not use the mic setup. So I'm just recording this as is in my studio. It's on my desk. Nothing real fancy. Let's see how this sounds. Another thing I notice is when I turn it on, even on the laptop, it's not great. It makes me sound more present, closer to the mic. It removes some of the reverb from bouncing off the screen and everything. But it still sounds really processed. There are times where you can kind of hear some phasing going on, something like that. So I'm still not a fan of enhanced speech. I'm not a fan of what it does to people's voices most of the time. It's too aggressive with the EQ and changes the basic quality of the voice. In terms of the text-based editing, it's basic. Let's see what this button does. So we can correct the transcript, we can copy, we can paste, and we can delete. It's not clear how I can add space to this or retime things. It doesn't look like I have access to the individual tracks, so if I wanted to, let's say I had crosstalk and I'm either forced to use their enhanced speech or leave it in as is, I don't have any control to go in and reduce mic bleed or do anything on the individual track level. Here's my quick take. I know it's in beta right now, but as it stands right now, Adobe Podcast Studio, it's just too basic. It's more akin to Riverside's editor and approach than it is to what Descript does. And when you think about it and compare it to other platforms out there with text-based editing, like Descript, Riverside, and Hindenburg, Podcast Studio, it's missing some basic functionality. Descript and Hindenburg both provide access to individual tracks while you edit. Descript and Riverside allow audio and video recording and editing. Hindenburg is a full-featured DAW. Adobe Podcast Studio, it's just limited. You don't have access to individual tracks when editing, and you can't download the raw audio so you are 100% boxed into their studio, and I'm just not a fan of that. Pros. It's free if you have an Adobe Express Premium or a Creative Cloud membership. It offers text-based editing. It's an all-in-one solution for recording and editing an audio podcast. The mic check can be helpful. Cons. No video. It requires any guest or co-host to have an Adobe account, whether that's free or paid. No access to raw audio. No access to individual tracks in the editor. Only one audio effect, and that's enhanced speech. No EQ or compression. Enhanced speech isn't very good. Enhanced speech doesn't have a strength control in the studio. Mic check doesn't make it clear what needs to be done to make the audio better. When they announced Project Shasta, I was envisioning Adobe creating something to take on Descript, but this just feels more like a toy to me. So what do you think? Are you as underwhelmed as I am? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to learn more about producing better quality audio, please subscribe to the channel. That's what I'm all about. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.